In 2009, the iPhone 3GS was released. So help me God. President Obama was inaugurated, and a company called ThreadUp was born. Fast forward to 2023, and Oakland-based ThreadUp is gracing the Time 100 list of most influential companies. James Reinhardt is the co-founder and CEO. I mean, the true story is I was getting dressed one morning and I had a closet full of clothes that I wasn't going to wear. So I went to a local consignment store to sell them after school that day. Took these bags in and I got to the front and the woman said, oh, we don't take these things. We just do luxury. And I thought, well, but this stuff has real, real value. It just doesn't have value to me. ThreadUp is one of the world's largest online consignment and thrift stores where you can sell and buy secondhand clothes and accessories for women and kids. The company sells more than 55,000 brands across 100 product categories. The idea that we, we buy stuff and then eventually we just give it away and it ends up in a landfill at some point, just to me felt like a broken system. Reinhardt admits he didn't set out to make an environmental impact, but over time, it's become a central focus of the business. The fashion industry admits up to 10% of global carbon emissions, which is more than the European Union. It continues to be the second largest consumer of water, and 85% of all textiles go to dumps each year. Fast fashion is the biggest culprit. If you don't know, fast fashion refers to cheaply made and priced clothing that looks a lot like designer items. Zara, H&M, and Shein are just a few that dominate that market. I think people now, consumers, especially young people, they want to be unique. They want to be different. It's a TikTok generation. It's an Instagram generation. And resale has that unique ability for you to find that stuff that other people don't have. I met up with ThreadUp's brand director to see some of their items for myself. Denim is a big one for us. These are from Madewell. Madewell and Levi's are some of our top categories. All clothing goes through a multi-point inspection. So we did a little test on clothes from my own closet. Is this something? So, Jobina, first of all, don't sweat it. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, because we're going to set you up to feel like manage your expectations. This is a fall item. Okay. We are looking for fall items. Love. And I heard that peplum is coming back. Peplum is apparently coming back. And polka dots. What? That's what the people say. And brown is really And cool. brown. <laughs> We got one. <laughs> While it's in great condition, it's super cute, does not have a size tag on it anymore. Mm. So unfortunately, we just can't take anything that doesn't have a size tag. Yeah, Jobina, I'm seeing a little bit of pilling. Yeah. That dress was a no, but for the yeses, you pack the items into a thread up clean out kit and send it off. If you're buying, this is what it looks like on the other end. So everything comes in one of our signature polka dot boxes. All materials can be recycled. ThreadUp accepts about half of what is sent to them. Leftover items go to rescue boxes. And those are sort of like bulk boxes of items that still have a little life left in them, but aren't good enough to list one by one in mm, our marketplace. Okay. And then outside of rescue boxes, we also work with primarily domestic thrift stores and sell things by the pound to them. Some argue that discouraging people from buying new is an economy killer, but advocates say no. It supports a circular economy. ABC News Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z may be one of the most visible examples of this. She took the No New Clothes Challenge in June of 2022 with an advocacy group called Remake Our World. Which is a group that looks at not just the environmental problems within the fashion industry, but at the social issues with people being underpaid, especially women. And so it was just a challenge to take a pause for three months and just readdress how we consume clothing because the average American consumes 16 pieces of clothing every three months. Ginger is almost 17 months strong, no new clothes, and shops consignment or rents to supplement. I am sure to every time I have this discussion say that I am coming from a place of privilege where I have a choice of whether or not I can buy things. People with higher incomes generate on average 76% more clothing waste than people with lower incomes according to Boston University School of Public Health. Returning one clothing item back into the circular economy extends its life by an average of two and a half years. ThreadUp is helping other brands and retailers do that with their resale as a service program. If you go to madewell.com today, you can shop all pre-owned Madewell clothing uh, right from their website, or you can do it uh, Kate Spade handbags that are all pre-owned, and we power the back end of all that. Changes are coming in the name of sustainability. The Council of Fashion Designers of America that organizes New York Fashion Week has pledged net zero by 2050. 
Ralph Lauren says it will use 100% sustainably sourced key materials by 2025. And newer brands like For the Few Intimates and Grammar are making a splash in the market. With an increasing interest in Gen Z and millennial consumers, resale is expected to grow nine times faster than retail in the next four years. Good news for resale companies like The Real Real, Poshmark, and even rental services like Rent the Runway. What do you think will be hard in the future? I think fighting the fast fashion fight will be real. And then I think the question is like, what's the role of government in creating incentives and policies that help consumers make good choices and help companies be more sustainable? And so we definitely want to be involved in an advocacy role. Reporting in Oakland, Jobina Fordson, ABC7 News.